captain warned us that sometimes big calving events happen. And waves overtake the entire beach. Oh my! We thought we had a good idea and a good grasp on what a big wave actually was until this piece of ice fell. Ooh. Then we realized we had no idea. Go, Blair! Ah! Ah! Last day on the boat. I'm thrilled. How are we looking? We're looking good. Sunshine, light breeze, smoke on the water. This is what they call a last hurrah, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. Yep, that's right, whoa. Here we go. Last hurrah, archway, novelty wave, dreamer. Let's go. Record time.
I hardly knew it could have been puking. <laughs> All right, I step back inside here to warm up. If you haven't noticed yet, we are back at the glacier. So, good morning, Nub Nation. The goal today is to simply enjoy what the glacier has to offer. I can't put any expectations on it. I caught like a thigh high wave the last time we did this, the first day of the trip. So, here we are, pretty much on the last full day of the trip, going back for more and I just saw about an eight foot wave break off the cliff, so it's hard to say if that's a good sign. Come on in, buddy. It's impossible to say at the glacier whether something falling is a good sign or not. We could go over there and catch absolutely nothing. There could be no calving events, or we could catch waves all day long, no problem. Other than that, this is by far the coldest water and the coldest conditions I've ever been in, and we are sitting in them for extended periods of time. We have 15 hours of light today, and I'm pretty much planning on being in the lineup waiting for a wave all day long. And the thing about this is, even if you get a wave, it could be three hours until your next wave, so there's a lot of waiting, so it's important to be warm, and uh, we're going for it out here, so this is the dream. Is he charging it? <laughs> like, what is he doing? Let me see. The seal's like, yo, that's my spot. Dude. What do you think's gonna happen today, Chank? Screw my spot. Uh, a lot of waiting. A luxury bathroom. Oh. <laughs> Hello. That's one way to get the shot. means that one right above the reef could be going any minute. <laughs> no whistling in the wheelhouse. our first 25 by 12 clearing. Oh my Lanta. Oh boy. Time for me to get down. We got a roller coming. <laughs> oh dude, it's triggering event after event. Suit up. Sound the alarm. What do they call the guy that hangs out in the crow's nest? Oh. Oh yeah. Suit up. Time to suit up. Oh yeah. Three big cracks. Skyler, I'm ready for my salmon shots. I'll show you a salmon shot when I'm swimming through the waters like the salmon of Capistrano.
20 minute paddle, check. Done deal, complete. Everything started out completely normal, just like the last time we visited the glacier. My goal was simply to get a better glacier wave than I had gotten the first day of the trip. I was ready to sit until it was completely dark out just to catch one wave. I was also feeling a lot more brave than I had before. I witnessed a few ice chunks fall and create solid sized waves, but because of the heavy ice field, the waves would fizzle out before they reached me. So I decided to make my way closer to the glacier wall. I felt confident and committed. So confident in fact, that at one point, I was within about 50 feet of the 600 foot tall vertical and unpredictable glacier wall. And right there and then is the first time that I felt like something wasn't right. So mental, this is so heavy. Like I wasn't even supposed to be there. Like at any moment, something could go terribly wrong. Over the past two times we were out here, we saw a few lefts peel down the cliff side there. So I decided to come real close to the cliff and I was really gung-ho about getting the left. I knew it was dangerous, but I was stoked on it. And I sat here for a couple minutes and a couple of the noises that this glacier made, made me realize that this entire thing can come down whenever it wants. And uh, for me to catch a three foot left right off the glacier and get the coolest shot that I've ever gotten and get probably the most epic wave of my life isn't worth it. I know my limits and I'd rather make it home to see my wife and my dog. So that was my time with the extreme. Hopefully we got some good ones that push all the way through. Wish me luck. Yeah, go Blair! Hyperflex cryo wetsuit. Can't even feel this ice. Oh. Oh, yeah. I think so. We're definitely riding. Waikiki, boys.
why'd you do that? All right, the biggest, the biggest struggle out here today is the fact that earlier there was some really big glacier calves and the waves that were coming off the rock over there were about three feet, except they were coming through this ice field. So there's no possible way to ride the wave. I even took my fins out at one point and paddled out there and I was getting hit in my shin and my knee every step I took by ice chunks. And it was absolutely as painful as it gets. So we got to witness some bombs that were unrideable and now we're sitting here the ice field has cleared out for us. We have a nice little clean bay, but there's no waves coming in. <laughs> Dude. I thought I was out of the woods with that one. It's the second bleeder of the trip. Yeah. First one was a sup incident. <laughs> <laughs> you were just telling me you could do another week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After about nine hours of waiting and very minimal action, our drone batteries were exhausted. So JT and Skylar decided to join Blair and I in the ice field. We had witnessed a good amount of action close to the glacier walls. So we were camped out on top of some icebergs relatively close. Unbeknownst to us, way too close. But at the time, it seemed like the logical place to sit. I can't wait to be on the boat again. <laughs> and the logical place to put cameras in case there was an epic calving event. Blair and I would be in position and we would nail the shot. So JT and Skylar joined us on their own respective icebergs, way too close to the glacier wall. And we waited. Glacier surfing is weird. It seems like it would be impossible to predict any aspect of a few thousand year old chunk of ice falling off a cliff, but there's a certain energy to it. And when you're down there, you can feel when the glacier is ready to give. And you can also feel when the glacier is not. Some parts of the day, the anticipation is high and the energy is good. But other times, it feels like all the energy's gotten sucked out of the room and everyone is just sitting there with nothing to say. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Were you still rolling? I was like, damn, he cut. I was still rolling. Sick. After about 15 hours of waiting and the longest lull of the day, I decided to pack it up and call it. The energy was gone and it felt like nothing was ever going to happen. So I started paddling back to the boat. Blair and Skylar paddled to the beach to have marshmallows, and JT and I made our way back to the Milo. Committed to this for two days of my life, and I caught the best wave of my glacier surfing experience in the first two minutes. A lot of the ice from earlier had been cleared out with the tide, so it only took me about 10 minutes to get back to the boat. I rinsed off and changed into some warm clothes, feeling a little defeated. I didn't know what to think about spending 15 hours of my day waiting for a wave that never came. But as soon as I dried off, put my beanie on, and walked onto the deck of the boat, I heard the crack. Biggest chunk of ice we'd seen the entire trip falls off the cliff right in front of us and creates an absolutely massive wave. Lucky for Blair, he was right there on the beach, still in his wetsuit, ready to catch this thing.
Holy <laughs> That thing was psycho! No way! No way! <laughs> Just having some marshmallows by the fire, baby! <laughs> yes! My initial reaction was depression. I had just waited 15 hours for that wave, and less than 20 minutes after me giving up, the biggest chunk of ice ever fell off the cliff and created the best wave we had seen the whole trip. The small silver lining was that Blair at least caught it. Blair, hey, I'm so stoked for you. <laughs> Dude, that thing was Oh, the thing was It was like fun. over your neck from the back oh. when you were watching. Gambler! Dude, I we would have died out oh, of But then I went back to watch the clip and I realized something profound. So big out there. That wave was less than 20 minutes from killing all four of us. This is where we were sitting. Skylar was on top of this iceberg right here. JT was standing on top of these icebergs right here. I was paddling through that wave through a massive chunk of ice, and it was just way too dangerous. So, it was too dangerous today, but hopefully I'll be back someday. And Blair and I were sitting in the water here. If that wave came, we would have had no choice but to try to catch it. And Blair and I would have gotten swamped by dozens of massive five foot chunks of ice. The wave literally washed over the iceberg that Skylar was sitting on top of and completely overtook all the icebergs on the beach that JT was on top of. Best case scenario, they would have ridden it out, lost all their camera gear and still been completely wet stuck with no paddle boards in the middle of the iceberg field with pretty much no way to get back to the boat besides swimming. Every time these waves break, they were washing massive chunks of ice with the wave. They were pushing ice towards the beach. So even if me and Blair did catch that wave, the chances of getting hit in the back by a massive piece of ice were really high. I didn't know what to make of this situation. Did the universe really wait for us to clear out? Or was it just dumb luck? Any way you slice it, we escaped death by less than 20 minutes. And I'm still blown away thinking about it right now. So the real silver lining for me is that I'm still here making these videos. I'm still here smiling, and I'm still here to spend time with my wife and my dog, Dennis. We had witnessed ice falling off the cliff all day long and sending waves in a certain direction. We thought we had seen the biggest waves. The captain warned us that sometimes big calving events happen and waves overtake the entire beach. But after watching this for two and a half days, we thought we had a good idea and a good grasp on what a big wave actually was until this piece of ice fell. Then we realized we had no idea what a big wave coming off this cliff actually looked like. This iceberg that Skylar was standing on top of was about six feet out of the water. And you can see in the video, the wave is completely overtaking the iceberg without a problem and still pile driving into the inside. Looking at this video again, there's absolutely nowhere for us to escape. There would have been nowhere for us to go and all of us would have been hit by the wave. Looking at the secondary wave, it's about a three or a four foot tall barrel and it possibly could be even bigger. What would we have done in that situation? Alaska was amazing. It was a once in a lifetime journey and a surf trip that I'll never forget. Thank you to Captain Mike and Wendy and Carlin of the Milo for the hospitality. Blair, JT, Skyler, and Chank for the good times. And all of you, the viewers, for making this one of the greatest experiences of my life. Six, seven days ago, we got on this boat not knowing what to expect. Now look at us. Dude, we left our boards. Oh, you left all of them? It's over. Nice. Woo! We're out of here. 
Who really knows what's next for me out here on the Dream Tour? All I can say is that I hope it's something warm. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to support and leave a like and a comment below this video. I'm gonna go sleep for a week. Thank you for watching for the dream. <laughs> you recognize me? <laughs> Hi, Hi. I missed you. <laughs> Hi. Hi, buddy. Hi. You didn't know it was me until it was too late. <laughs> Did you? Oh, my God. Did you really Hi, Boogie. This is Boogie. <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi.